Greetings, how are you all doing? Deeks here again for another edition of All About Truvis. I think it's number 12 or 13 now, but we're cracking along. Um, big thank you to everyone that is watching. There's not many, uh, but it's really cool that uh, some of you have been uh, watching and commenting and etc. So thank you for watching. Um, if you've not subscribed, please subscribe because uh, I'm not making any money of this, but it'd just be really useful to know uh, how many people we've got watching. And if there's anything that you think I should be covering, um, just let me know in the comments. So I got something to say before we start going through what balls I've um, that I've got this um, this week. But first, cheers. Just going to enjoy some more rum and coke. Yes. So I've had a few people ask me about grading of balls. And I think we've got to be very careful as Truvis collectors. Now, the reason why I say that is because there's lots of different grading of golf balls out there. So you've got people that use A, B, C. People use words like mint, pearl, uh, 5A, A, 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 4A, A, A, A. And there's all of these different uh, ways of grading golf balls. And that these grades are built for people that want to play with the golf ball so for instance uh five a's would be no blemishes at all four a's will be a small blemish maybe some sharpie or some tree sap you know uh, and you know and they'll go down and the, the lower you go the, you know the worse the appearance of the golf ball will look but for playing with the golf ball it's not actually going to make that much difference if there's a big smear of sharpie over it but it's actually going to ruin the ball if we want it so i would recommend don't pay any attention to whatever grade the seller is saying because first of all it's subjective so it's down to the person that's doing it and you may not agree with them but secondly we want the ball to display for, for the majority of us anyway you know so we want it to look nice we want it to you know look factory fresh so instead of when you are buying a golf ball instead of looking what grade it is don't pay any attention to that always try if the seller is willing to just get a photo of the front the top and the sides and I would recommend getting it done on a white background. So ask them to do it on like a piece of A4 paper. That way you can see the discoloration as well. So for instance, whenever I sell golf balls on eBay, uh, my handle's Deek711, not got anything for sale at the moment, but do keep uh, bearing that in mind. But I do it on like a wooden floor. Now that's not gonna show the discoloration as clearly as if you would on a plain piece of white paper. So, help the people that are buying from you by doing it on white paper taking pictures of all the different sides um because i think i think the grading is throwing people off they're thinking oh is it going to be good just ask to see pictures of the ball because you want to know that what you're getting um you know is is something that you're going to be able to display um, of all the balls that I've got uh, this week, the majority of them are in mint condition. Uh, when I say mint, there are no blemishes, no scratches, no marks whatsoever. Uh, there is one with a small uh, scuff and there is one that has definitely got some discoloration. And that's why I think asking, for have the, uh, asking to have the white background would just really show up any discoloration because you can't always tell. I'm just going to shut the door. Give me two seconds. You do not want to hear my washing machine going round and round. Cheers. So I've got 13 new balls and we'll talk through them. We'll start with quite common and then we'll work our way back. And I've got a few that I can't name. So all of you eagle eye hunters out there, please do let me know. First one, really standard. It is a Dick Sporting Goods uh, green and white um, I've already got one but this one's in better condition so I will be looking to offload offload the other one um, but as I said before really common in the US really hard to get in the UK so do keep a lookout for these 
Uh, next one I've been trying to get for ages. Now I've got the Grey Oaks um, traditional ball, which is the blue acorn, uh, not acorn, oak leaf. And then this is the pink one. I've been after this one for some time and I've I've been trying to get it, and but I've found, finally managed to get it and it's a really good, um, really good quality ball as well. Uh, Grey Oaks is in Florida. I should know that. My dad lives in Florida. Uh, next one, let's go with ones that I know. Right, this is a story. European tour. Two years ago, or a year ago, you could buy European tours in boxes of 12 in the UK for 27 quid. You know, so you get 12 balls, 27 quid, and they're everywhere. And they, annoyingly, they were less than the traditional Trubers, the retail Trubers. They were everywhere. So I did a deal with uh, Dan in New York. How's it going, Dan? And uh, I thought I'll trade him six really common ones that you can get in the UK for six really common ones that you can get in the US. So I thought, you know what, European tour, I can pick those everywhere. Well, ever since I've sent in the European tour ones, I can't find any. This is the first one I've managed to find. I've not paid too much for it. Um, but this is the lesson here. And I, I was talking to someone on uh, social media earlier on today that... It may be common today, but you never know what's going to happen in future. So, for instance, another ball that I'm going to show you, this one, which is the Callaway Red Teddy. Now, this is only for retail in Japan. So very, very difficult to get hold of because Japan, they don't ship, um, you know, so you really need to have gone there yourself. However... With all of the uh, buyers in the US that are buying the Callaway Trubers runoffs, you know, they just fill up ball, they fill up buckets and bins of balls that they've gone into print and they've not printed 12 out. So there's some extra and then they sell them off in 12 of really random ones, um, you know, and that's where all of these people are selling all of these weird and wonderful balls from because they're not going to all of these golf courses. They're simply buying ones that don't fit into boxes of 12. Now, this one, I am seeing so many of the red teddies now. And I'm seeing them in the US. I'm not seeing them in Japan. I'm seeing them in the US. So what's happened is they've obviously printed out a load for Japan, lots of um, overprints. And so they're flooding the market. So four weeks ago, I would, I would have I would have paid 15 to 20 pounds for this. But now that I can see that they're slowly entering the market their value's gone down a bit and that is exactly what you need to worry about and I should have bared this in mind for the European tour the the demand will change but also the printing will change I don't think they're going to reprint these European tour versions because you know it was probably done for the release of the European tour two years ago or one year ago so don't get rid of any of your collection um, because you think you can replace it because it just comes and goes like the Sweden ball. So the blue, the, the light blue and yellow one. Again, last year you could get them everywhere. But now, can't find them anywhere. Can only get them in Sweden. And I can't speak Swedish, so I don't even know how to order them. But be careful. If you're going to lose something from your your collection, make sure you know where you can get another one. Because I was really struggling with this one. But yeah. Callaway Red Teddy as well. Really pleased with that one. It's, to be honest, I'll talk about this. The Japanese ones are really hard to get hold of. So any of the chevrons, any of the bears, any of the paws, if you can get hold of those, um, they're retail. So you don't feel like they should be hard to get hold of, but they are because how many people go to Japan and how many people actually think about, you know, bringing back um, Callaway to sell and trade with other people? Um, so Red Teddy, really pleased with that one. Uh, next one is Brayburn, which is a golf course in Massachusetts. This one is in really good condition. You can kind of tell that, you know, it's been used. It's a tiny bit discolored, but it's a beautiful green and purple with their crest on it. And green and purple do go really well together on the Trubers. Um, so Brayburn, uh, number 1931. Um, the next one, uh, this is Royal Birkdale. 
uh, number 1889. Uh, picked this one up recently as well. This is in mint condition. Uh, really nice crest. Um, well, maybe there's a little bit of discoloration there, but it's not nothing to phone home about. Um, but again, really nice ball. Um, for instance, for, one thing I will say is um, I'm a big collector of Hawaii golf balls. Now, UK, a year ago, it wouldn't have been worth it because nobody did them. Wentworth did them, St Andrews did them, Carnoustie did them. But no one else was making the balls. But now, I think there's about 20 different golf courses in the UK. So uh, Sale, uh, West Lancashire, Formby Hall, Balbury Woods, uh, Berkshire, Woburn, all of these are now doing it. So if you wanted to have like a little niche collection within your collection, UK balls, are, you know, they're starting to get out there. So Royal Birkdale. This is one that I'm going to pronounce wrong. This is the Royal Poinciana. I'm going to show you this one. Royal Poinciana. Now, this is a golf course in Naples, in Florida. They've got so many golf courses in Naples. I've got, I've already got a few from Naples. I think Mediterra, uh, one of the uh, Trubis is um, from Naples as well. But this is a simple uh, red, I'm guessing the tree is called Poinciana, linked to a poinsettia because they're a red tree. But red tree on a white background, quite unusual because it's got initials rather than a number. So, where others have had a number, this has just got the letters RP. Royal Poinciana. Uh, next one we're going to go for is this one, which is the RSM, which is a consulting company in the UK, RSM Consultants International. Uh, it's simply RSM, their logo on a blue background. Uh, next one we're going to go for is the University of Colorado. This is a really nice ball, actually. So you've got their logo, which is CU, and then the buffalo. And the buffalo is in gold and black. Quite common colours on a tube, but usually they're in the, the, the solid colours, not in the uh, the random uh, just the just the pictures themselves. This is a really nice one. Never seen one until last week, and I saw two, so I'm lucky to get this one. Cheers. I think oh, we got four more. This one is Shingle Creek in Florida which is essentially a vista of a green with a T flag in gold. Now, I've said about gold trees before, very few of them look good, um, simply because they just get lost in the white. There's um, Paiute, uh, which is a golf course in the US. Uh, Paradise Strong is another one. Those gold ones are really nice. And if you can get hold of a gold chevron, minted but this one is, is a nice ball but you just don't it just doesn't grab you because gold on white it just doesn't stand out but shingle creek and that's in florida so three left and i can't i can't identify them whatsoever phil if you're out there give me a hand but this one is a flower now I've had a chat with the wife and she says that it's a lupin. I think it's lavender, but it is simply just an array of these in blue on white. Uh, I've typed in all kinds of stuff into um, into Google. Lupins, lavender, golf courses, reeds. Can't find it. If you can find it, I'd really appreciate it. But it's a really nice ball. Uh, as is with this one. Now, this is a black on white. And it's simply, and I need to get you to see this, it is a crane in front of trees, and I think that's a wrecking ball. Now, I have done an hour's worth of searching on YouTube, uh, not YouTube, on Google, and I can't find what this might be. 2020 is the year, a crane with a wrecking ball with some palm trees in the background. Answers on a postcard. Be really interested to see what you've got. Last one is the only one that's come through that's not mint. Now, I've managed to scrub this up quite well, I think. So the money shot is plain white. The back, there is some slight discoloration. I don't think you're going to pick it up on this. But we have got a 
Rodeo Vista and there is a golf flag in the background, number 19 in a maroon on a white background. This is a stunning ball. Again, this is another one that I've never seen before until last week and I saw two of them and I managed to buy one of them. So I'm quite pleased with this one. Um, but yeah, so that's me uh, for this week. Um, but do... Do think about what I said with regards to uh, listening to grades of golf balls. And if you are a buyer and you want to buy for your collection, just make sure you get pictures of the ball that you're going to buy. Don't listen to the grade that the person is giving you. Uh, there are some sellers that just want to make as much money as possible. And, you know, they'll 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 sell it falsely or, you know, they'll be misleading just ask for the traditional pictures of the front the top the side and as i said on a white background really makes it um stand out so you can see if there is any discoloration because you can pick up a scuff on a picture or some sharpie but that discoloration is really really difficult without something to scale it against Okay, well, that's me. Um, coming up next week, I've got some more balls. I've got some coming from uh, the US, including, uh, hold the front page, I've managed to finally get the Angus Glen ball. I've been trying to get hold of this for about six months. There's one that's been on sale in Canada for six months, but I just can't find a way to, to ship it to me. But uh, really good uh, Trubus collector out there setting me up with one. So I'm going to have that one uh, in the next month or so. Uh, also going to be doing some trades and I'll also try and come up with a um, a bit more information about how I plan to display my golf balls in the future. Anyway, thanks for joining. Uh, any comments or if you can identify any of the balls that I can't, please drop down below in the comments. Uh, but it's been great to spend some time with you this Friday and um, have a good weekend. Take care. Bye bye.